Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will quickly show the division algorithm I have implemented in Python. Um, it's a straightforward translation of the theorem that I talked about in the previous segment. So please watch the previous segment if you have not watched. So the problem is given A and B, we need to find two numbers Q and R such that A is equal to Q times B plus R, okay? This is something that we proved in the previous segment, such, such numbers Q and R exist, okay? The question now is, can we find them? And um, the algorithm that I am showing here uh, is, is actually achieving the goal. It takes two numbers A and B as input. Um, one more condition I've added is that to make the algorithm simple to explain, I have added a constraint that A is greater than or equal to zero, although the algorithm itself should be easy to adapt uh, for, uh, for the case that A is less than zero, okay? Similarly, B can also be less than zero. But uh, for this discussion, you, you can assume A and B both are um, non-negative numbers, okay? More precisely, B is greater than zero, A is greater than or equal to zero, okay? So uh, how do we proceed now? Let us consider the case one, simple case. What if A is smaller than B? In that case, uh, we, we know for sure, we can write A as zero times B, right? is zero times B uh, plus A, okay? This is perfectly fine because the condition here is that R has to be less than B, right? This is the condition here. R has to be less than B. And uh, of course, R has to be greater than or equal to zero. And in the place of R, we have A and we have A is less than B. So this is true if A is less than B. So let's look at the code for that case that A is less than B. If the input A is less than B, I have a, a Q is equal to zero, which is what we need, Q is equal to zero. And I have assigned R to be A, as you can see, R is A. So um, the while loop won't even execute because A is greater than or equal to B, which is wrong because we started with A less than B, okay? That means the program will skip the while loop and it will return Q and R as expected, Q is zero, R is A, that's good. Okay, so A less than B, the program is correct. Now consider the opposite of A less than B, which means A greater than or equal to B, right? Uh, how do we do that part? When A is greater than or equal to B, now let me draw a number line so we can see what's, ha what's happening in this uh, while loop more visually. So here is your zero and here is your B, right? And here is your A. What we are doing here is that we keep on subtracting B until we find a number here in this interval, an integer number between zero and B, and that number becomes our R, okay? So how are we doing that? We start with R equal to A, right? And we check whether is A is the current R right to B, okay? Which is true because A is here. So what we do, we subtract, uh, you see here R equal to R minus B. It means we subtract B. So essentially we get into a new R here. So new R is A minus B. And then um, of course, the fact that we subtract once means the quotient is incremented by one. And then we go and check whether is the new R still, this is the new R, okay? Is this new R still uh, uh, right to B? If it is, that means we can still get rid of some more amount from B, right? So we keep the next R, which means it becomes A minus 2B. So let me write it here, A minus 2B. Therefore we stop and we, we exactly return the R. Okay, that's all. That R is A minus QB. And the interesting thing is that I have put an assert statement, R is equal to A minus QB within the while loop, which is true. Every time the program runs, R must be equal to a minus QB. Every time the loop runs, this constraint must be satisfied. This is like a loop invariant. Um, in, in program verification, people use loop invariants to, to prove correctness. But um, I am adding here to, to explain to you that this is true. Even if the, uh, the loop has not yet terminated, this is always 